nami Bóg. Remember, no Russian. In its release in 2003, the Call of Duty franchise has produced dozens of games with storylines taking players through several different wars. Since the launch of Call of Duty Black Ops, players have fought 161 World War II's every day, fired over 1.1 trillion shots, killed the world's population nine times, and fallen the height of Mount Everest almost six million times. There have been over five trillion headshots and players have run around the earth 129,000 times. Despite its violent qualities, people love this game. Every time a new game hits the stores, people line up nights before, awaiting its new arrival. In 2011, the game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 earned $775 million worldwide in its first five days, the highest five-day total ever attained by a game, film, or book. In February of 2012, the population of Call of Duty players worldwide reached 40 million. Every week in the online world alone, 14 million games of Call of Duty are played. This game plays a major role in many people's lives every day. So one has to ask, do these games cause gamers to become more prone to violence? Or do they allow gamers to release built up aggression and frustration while providing other benefits along the way. Let's find out. A research was conducted at Indiana University showing that people who played violent video games experienced brain activity that suggested an increase in the emotional arousal and a decrease in the self-control areas of the brain. It's a known fact that shooters from incidents like the Virginia Tech or Columbine shooting were avid video game players. Keeping the Indiana research in mind, is this just a coincidence? Avid lawyer and anti-video game activist Jack Thompson argues that there is a direct causation here. He proclaims that these video games have become part of the fiber of our society. When this game is given to some mentally ill person, the risks are just too high, he says. Tim Koenig, a father of four boys, is also against these video games in an everyday setting. I wouldn't go so far as saying that it makes kids more violent, but I, I do think that it sort of desensitizes them to the violence. So I think that you know, when, when kids that have seen or have played these games frequently, when they see violent acts, maybe you know on television and so on, where I think the normal response would be, it, it would be sort of, and perhaps upsetting or sort of uh, shocking, they, they, they see it more as, as normal, and, it's, and, and some of the violence that they see really isn't normal. Media expert Michael Rich from the Center on Media and Child Health would agree with Mr. Koenig. Rich's studies show that if a gamer enjoys playing Call of Duty often, his brain immediately associates the game with positive thoughts, and the events of this game become normalized. Do you think it's do you think it's detrimental to play this type of video game? I would say it's detrimental if you're not heeding the rating system because it's rated mature for 17 and up. So if you have like little kids playing it, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> Depends. Obviously, it could be bad. It just depends on who, like, the, what the person does, and, like how they react towards it. No! Are you kidding me? I fuck you. I think there's a point though where it it can get to be a little bit too obsessive, um, in a sense that that's all you want to do. When a young boy asks for Call of Duty for Christmas because everyone else is playing it, that is the perfect reason for a parent to not get the boy this gift and avoid normalizing him to war and violence.
You dead meat now, Buster. There is also an argument that the link between violent video games and violent tendencies is not very definitive in the first place. Over the past decade alone, video game sales have increased from $2 billion a year to nearly $10 billion a year. However, violent crime offenses have not increased over time, but decreased. Some would even argue that these games do more good than bad for the people who play them. According to Professor Trent Kilcannon of William & Mary University, 30 minutes of playing video games a day can significantly reduce stress levels. Do these games help you relax or de-stress? They definitely help me relax. Whenever I'm really stressed out and have been working on things pretty hard, uh, I like to just sit down and play some video games and take my mind off of things. There are scientific studies that reinforce these students' opinions. It has been found that regular video game players have lower blood pressure and lower cortisol levels. Cortisol is a chemical that is linked to high stress levels and can lead to many detrimental effects if levels are too high for prolonged periods of time. There's no question that Call of Duty has taken the world by storm. This virtual world plays a major role in the daily lives of millions of people. But what effect does this game have on these people? Does it cause them to become more prone to violence? Or does it help them to relax and reduce stress? There are strong arguments to support both sides of this controversy. The Columbine and Virginia Tech shooters were avid, violent video game players. Did their gaming help normalize them and several other gamers to a world of violence? A direct causation between the games and violence itself has yet to be proven. More games of Call of Duty are sold every day, but violence stays the same. Most gamers consider it a means of relaxation, not a means to violence. So who's right? The game itself calls the player to a life of duty. But what life is the gamer actually being called to? Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Product not yet rated.